Joining us, a very special guest from Acronis. He is the community evangelist at Acronis, and his name is Bogaudin Saturyev. Hey, Bogaudin, welcome into the show. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Kerry, for, for your offer and invite to this live stream. I'm pretty, pretty sure that this, this experience is the first time for me, and uh, I'm very honored that this is first time with you because I always uh, love seeing your streams and participating uh, whenever it's possible. And uh, hopefully this stream will be no exception and we'll all have a lot of fun today and learn a lot of new things. I learn better by watching or by doing than I do than by reading. So we're gonna just show people the way I like to learn. Okay, what do I do? So there are seven tabs on the left. The main, most important tab is backup, where we are at the moment. So next uh, section is the uh, containing all the backups you currently have. And uh, by, by default, we now have a uh, full system backup. Click on the desktop film CB uh, with 32, yeah. This okay. will allow you to... Whoa, we just changed the screen, okay, so... Yeah, th this will allow you to specify a backup source. And here you have options. You can either select entire PC, which will back up all the fixed disks you have in the system. Okay. Or you can select particular disk or partition. Or, or okay, disk. I see that here, the disks and partitions, files yes. and folders, folders, files to notarize. I don't even know what that means. Yes, that's a, a premium feature which will allow notarizing or documents or photos or anything. and. Uh, share and confirm the authenticity. Uh, now you can back up the data stored on your NAS device. You can back up your mobile device. Yeah, I'm looking at that. I see the XR700. It saw my Netgear XR700 router. Yeah. You can back up. Oh, you can back up your phone? Yes, exactly. Wow. We didn't even discuss that, the cloud service social network. OK, all right. So let's say we want to set this up. Let me scroll back. <coughs> I shall, I, shall, I, I shall add that you can back up phone without having to install Acronis to image. Acronis Mobile, which is available for Android and iOS, is free and can be uh, used for free. You don't even have to download trial of Acronis to image or, but what or if buy I get Acronis a, What if I get another phone? What if I go from a, an Android to an iPhone? Can you I just have to, you, you just have to log in. You can use it with QNAP and... Uh, uh, Second one, Synology devices. I will share the links on how to set up um, Acronis Mobile Backup. Wow. All right, we're, we're getting in way over. Let's, okay, we have to revisit this topic because that's a whole other yeah. thing. But good to know, For we'll plant that seed into the audience that's interested. They can look that up in, in the meantime. So I want to I wanna do like a active protection on this PC, right? I want to set it up so I'm going to be making my backups on this laptop from this laptop. So you want to protect entire entire PC then? Yeah, I want to. I want to protect the whole PC. Mm -hmm. You oh, select. Oh, wait, no, hold on. How would you recommend I do it? Let me ask you this. Well, again, it depends on what you have in there. Uh, so in this example, I bet you have just one drive. Correct. Uh, you don't have any other drives attached to the system, so you, you you're just okay with with entire PC. Sometimes. Uh, well, for example, in one of my home systems, I have four disks installed, and two of them are just used like temporary storage of large data, like large video projects, for example. Uh, and w when I'm when I'm done with the project and moved it out to a NAS device, I just clean up clean up entire disk. So I don't usually include these disks in the backup. And I always do disks and partitions on this system. And I uh, select just disk well, C, which is... Well, which is I, mean, I get what you're saying. You can select. But yeah. so where I'm coming from is I'm coming from the average regular computer owner who has no idea what any of this stuff means, right? So the safest way to get them backed up, because they don't know where their files are. You ask the average computer user, where are your files? And they'll say, wherever they saved. Yeah, right. well, safe, safest way would be entire PC. Okay, so let's, let's walk me through that. What do I do? So you click on entire PC. 
Okay, so I'm going to click on entire PC. Yeah. Now you need to select the destination. The destination, but I want the destination to be on the PC. Okay, but you still have to click on select destination and specify oh. location. So I so I'm going to go over here to select destination. Yeah. And click that. Now again, you have a choice. It can be either a Chronos Cloud or external drive or NAS device or any other custom location. So you probably want to click on Browse. Browse, OK. Now, this PC. This PC. OK. Uh, we'll have to probably create a folder on a desktop. Well, it's, uh, it's better in documents or, or in documents. Well, you know, we'll just select documents. That's fine. And then uh, click OK. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And now, now you will see the notice uh, that it is not recommended to back up a partition to itself, uh, which is obvious. And uh, if, you, if you back up a partition to itself, it may uh, greatly reduce the backup speed. Yeah, this uh, is what I, I wanted to do. I think I, I, so. What I wanted to do is I wanted to set up a Cronus where it does that automatic thing to its own partition. Yeah. Which one is that? Is that Active Protection? What What is that? It, it is Secure Zone. Uh, oh. For, yes, a Cronus Secure Zone. For all that, right, let's, let's cancel all this. Let's not do this. What we? <laughs> I don't want to back it up into my Documents folder. I want to back up to a separate partition on this drive, and I want it to automate where it does that every every Monday. Can we do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's go to Tools then. Okay, so I go over here to Tools, and we'll click Yes. Are you sure you want to cancel that? Yep. Oh, wow! Look at all this. Can you scroll scroll down a bit? And we'll scroll down here. Let's look for. Yeah, click on. Zone. Yeah, the Chronos Secure Zone. Okay, so I'll select the Chronos Secure Zone. Ooh, this is all new to me. Yeah, the problem here that we don't have a free space available on disk, so we perhaps need to just shrink uh, partition C a bit for this for this example. So how do I do that? Uh, you need to open your disk management snap pen, right click oh, on so Windows. I, I can't do it in the secure zone. I can't yeah. do that on the screen I'm in now. I've got to go to <clears throat> disk management. And then I will go to the big partition here mm -hmm. and right click. And shrink volume. Shrink Remember volume. that you cannot shrink a volume to uh, well, you can shrink the volume only uh, to the size of the data on the drive. So if you, for example, only have 50 gigabytes of data on volume C, you can only shrink down to that size. Not and you shouldn't not. shrink down to that size because your OS needs yeah, room for yeah. the swap file. But we should yeah, be good. I, I'd say 50 gigabytes, uh, 50 gigabytes is enough. So shrink it down by 50 gigs. And, so uh, let's okay. call this uh, space one. The amount of space to shrink in megabytes, one eight zero 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 zero. Oh no! Wait a minute. I'm I'm trying to think which way I'm which direction. Yeah, it's it, it's it's fine. It's fine. This should be fine. It'll, it'll, it'll is, be... Am I shrinking my C drive to sixty three, or am I shrinking my C drive to one eighty? Oh, you you need to sp let's specify fifty thousand then. Sixty thousand. Fifty or sixty. Sixty thousand. All right, that's better. So yeah, my yeah. The total size of my C drive will be 183,000, um, and then I'll have a new partition that's 60,000 megabytes in size. And then I'll hit shrink. And then right here, you'll see this partition is now over here, and this space is now unallocated. Okay. That's exactly what I want to do. So my C drive is now 180 gigs in size, and my unallocated drive is now 60 gigs. Is that all I need to do in here? I can close this? Yes, 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 exactly. OK, we'll close that. So we go back to a Cronus. Now we you have need to refresh. To re right? re no, you, you need to close and restart. Uh, close. Right Open. Perfect. And it automatically selected unallocated for Yeah, Yeah, exactly. It sees the unallocated space. 
and assumes that you need to that you want to put a secure zone into that unallocated space. Perfect. So and it's got a little check mark that shows it graphically down here. And then just what next, right? Next, and then you specify the size. Okay, so we're doing next, and then it wants the size. We want to use the whole thing. So you can just drag drag the slider on the okay. top. So the reason I keep talking on top of you is so that my screen can be shown as I don't want to do this off screen. So that's why I keep jumping in so the, the video will auto switch. Okay, and then next. Yep. Okay, and now it says this is what it looks like before, this is what it's going to look like after, and proceed. I, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep, correct. Okay, so we'll you also have an optional step to specify a password. If you oh, I, oh yeah, right down here. I can. So, what's the point of that? Well, uh, it will just uh, restrict the access uh, to the secure zone. Uh, if without the password, you just won't be able to access. It. Just click on it. Okay, I've clicked on it. Yeah, without the password, you won't be able to restore anything to access secure zone anyway. Oh, it's, it, it's still going to back up automatically, though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But everything that's backing up is on the C drive. So if the C drive is not password protected, what's the point in password protecting the data and the other part? I guess First, some people have a reason. I don't. I don't have that reason. So, okay, that's fine. I'm going to leave it as do not protect, and I'm going to hit proceed. What happens if you set that password and you forget that password? You will have to answer a secret question if you forget the password. You what if I the forgot the answer question? to my security question? That'll be a problem then. Okay, so remember that, people. The password is to keep people out. You forget it, you can't get in, nobody can help you. That's what it's supposed to do. It's to keep people out. So take, don't take that lightly when you set passwords to, to your data, especially encrypted data, because oftentimes it's impossible for anybody to help you. It's impossible for them to crack it. That's how secure it is. Did I say that right? Yep, exactly. Hence the name Secure Zone. <laughs> All right, so what's it doing right now? It's creating the uh, secure partition. Uh, it makes sure that, well, it's, it's done. It's it makes sure done. that, that the, the, well, it, it, created, it probably formatted in FAT32 in this example. Oh. So yeah, it's a FAT32 partition. Uh, so when it's done, it lets you know. You can just hit OK. All right, well, let's go back to my screen here. So we'll go OK. But it hasn't made a backup. All it's done right now is it's just formatted that partition. Is that all? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it has prepared the grounds for placing the backup. So you go to Backup tab. Now we go to the Backup tab. Mm -hmm. And we're going to select the desktop, right? You'll, you'll leave the source as is. So oh, I don't have to change it. Yeah, yeah. Select you destination. Know. Okay, so I'm going to select destination. You can browse. Browse. And there you see a Chronos Secure Zone. Uh, oh, right yeah. here. There it is. Okay. And then I click OK. okay. Yeah. So now what we need to do is to specify the options for the backup. If oh, okay. So the, right, right over here, well, left over here left. <laughs> is the options button. And then we can specify the if schedule. We want to do the schedule if we want to do it daily, weekly. So I want to do it every, I guess it'll be a Monday at 2 o'clock in the morning. That would be late Sunday night. That would be a good time for me. Now, what happens if it misses? What if my laptop is off? Click on advanced settings. Advanced. Backup only when the computer is loaded or screensaver is running. Oh, that's nice because that means it won't interrupt your work. Yep. Prevent the computer from going to sleep. That's important. Run missed operations at system startup with delay. Oh, that's yep. good. All right. Then we go to that, back. Here you specify how it behaves. Uh, let's quickly just show upon event, nonstop, and do not schedule so that uh, we see what other options are there. Wait, hold on. I'm just, I'm just noticing something. If I click on Tuesday, Tuesday stays lit, Wednesday stays lit, yep. and I click on them again to deselect them. Yes, exactly. So okay. you're, you're pretty flexible in specifying uh, the uh, days of the week uh, which you need to create a backup. Okay, so so that screen is set. And then where do you want me to go? No, uh, back uh, click, on, click, on, click on up on event. Let's show 
what are upon event and non-stop options. Oh, upon event. Yes. So you can specify to back up if you connect an external device or if a user is logged in or logged off or system shutdown uh, event happens. Uh, for example, if your PC is running, if, if you intend to leave your PC running uh, every time and for some reason a shutdown is initiated, so if, for example, unwanted update installed, uh, it will uh, first create a backup of the system and only then proceed with the shutdown. Or system startup, uh, on a system startup, when, when your system is loaded within a set amount of minutes, it will start a backup. Cool. Now, to non-stop, non-stop will uh, create a backup continuously. Uh, so, within like five minutes interval, uh, it will detect whether any changes in the system uh, occurred, and all these changes will be backed up. This especially uh, especially useful for those who are actively making changes in the system, like uh, creating small sets of files, like. Uh, maybe running a database or uh, those who putting or putting putting lo lots of pictures in and out or video files small video files in and out or documents in and out uh, so or or editing or editing chapters of their work and every 5 minutes uh, it, it, it a file so the, here's the peculiarity it auto saves yes here's the peculiarity if in word you set auto save up and it will save it into a file, then with a, with, a, with a non-stop backup, it will detect that the file has changed and will back, back it up. So non-stop backup means it's always on alert for any files changing yes. the instant, the instant they change, it immediately backs them up. No, no, each five minute. Each five oh, minutes. Five minutes, five minutes. Each okay. Five minutes. Okay, that's an important thing. Some people are like, oh, my computer crashes randomly. I mean, this is a savior for people that are having random computer crashes. You know, exactly. that they don't lose all their work. All right. And then finally, the last option here do not schedule. That's just making a one off backup, right? Yeah, just manual backup. All right. So Whatever we want to want. Up the way I'm advising my viewers who are, you know, intimidated by their computer, they can easily follow along with us. We're going to select weekly and I'm going to do it on Monday at two o'clock in the morning. I'll just leave it at 2 12. Um, and then what? We go to backup scheme? Yeah. Okay. So backup scheme, we've got incremental. Our yeah, options. By, oh my gosh, by, we have a lot of options. <laughs> yeah, by default, we go with incremental scheme and it will create a full version after every uh, five uh, incremental backups. And it will delete versions older than 183 days, so half a year. Uh, but we're free uh, to change it anyway. Uh, we won't. I personally would uh, advise for the default scheme. Okay. However, okay. However, it is possible to specify a custom scheme. So if you select custom scheme uh, and then backup method, oh. click on backup method. And then you can choose how you want to do it yourself. So, yeah, you may, for example, create a full backup every time, every backup occurrence. Sure. Or you may choose to create incremental backups. Only. All right. Well, well oh, it's good to know that that's how that works. I want to set it just the way the customer should do it, which is just leave it with the defaults mm -hmm. and create a full version after every five. Oh, I see you can change that if you want to. Yes. And you can also turn on automatic cleanup. Oh, turn on automatic cleanup, yeah. delete when it's older than 183. Oh, I like that. Okay, good. Good. All right, and then we go to what? Notification next? Yes. So Here you specify uh, settings for your email so that whenever a backup is done, the not notifications is sent out to the email you specify. So it'll let you know the status that a backup was done, if it was successful, if there were any problems. Or failed, yeah. Or if there are no disk space available. What's the server settings and stuff for down there? Uh, that uh, is actually uh, can be obtained, uh, say, for, for Gmail. Uh, they have a specific help article oh. which describes. It has to have permission to access the outgoing mail server. I got gotcha. you. Yes. You need to specify the settings are particular for, uh, for, uh, for, for, for your email provider. 
say for Gmail, they have an article which describes what exact settings needs to be put in uh, to the uh, proper either server settings or a port or encryption type. So and that depends on what email provider you're using. Exactly. And up here it says show notification message on insufficient free disk space. This is an important box to check in my opinion because if you just leave everything on auto and you ignore it, you're not getting any of these emails, you're not reading them, you need a message that lets you know your backup drive is full <laughs> or is no longer ha that you've got more data that you need to back up than your backup drive can hold. That's an important notification. Yeah. Because it's telling you I can't back it up. you got more stuff than, than you have space to put it. All right, then over here we've got exclusions. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Do you, oh, do you see, do you see uh, in the bottom additional notification settings? Uh, no. Oh, it's way, way down here. Oh, look at this. Additional notification setting. Well, I can't uh, click. Oh, 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 yeah, it's OK. It's OK. It's, 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 it's as it should be. Can you go to exclusions? Can you ex exclusions then? Exclusions, OK. Yeah, exclusions. So these are the files oh, yeah. we're telling it, don't waste my backup drive space giving me my hibernation file, my page file, or thumbnails, or my restore points. I don't want any of that. That's a waste of space. Exactly. Um, OK. And uh, can I add directories? Like, let's say I have a, a YouTube folder directory. Yes, can I you add, can. Like, let's say, I've got, let's say I've got a two terabyte hard drive, and 30 gigs of it is Windows in my software. And 100 gigs of it are my YouTube videos. And I don't want to back those up all the time because they don't change. So can I just say exclude my 100 gigabyte YouTube folder, but back up the rest of my drive? Yes, absolutely. You can just click on plus button and specify the path to your folder. And you can also use masks. It's so any file example. that ends with this or starts with that, you can yes. automatically exclude. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So for everybody else, though, anybody that's just watching, you don't need to change anything in here. We're just explaining what it is. But that's the exclusions tab, and you can leave it as is. Now we can go to advanced. Mm -hmm. OK, yep. so now on advanced, we have what? Let's see, image creation mode, backup sector by sector. That would be like a drive that's starting to fail. You need forensic recovery. That's yep. very unusual that you would ever need to use that. Uh, pre or post commands, this is a bit more advanced. Um, here you specify the bat files which needs to run either pre-backup or post-backup. So for example, uh, one example I recently had, uh, one of our customers was using uh, Firebird database. And what he had to do is to uh, use a bat file to create a backup of a Firebird database uh, pre-backup and then uh, make sure that wait for like several seconds to make sure that the backup is saved and then only then the backup run. This is because Firebird database was not compatible with Microsoft VSS, mm. uh, which would just back up the uh, database itself. Now, with, sector with, by sector backup is, is also going to, uh, I know we were just talking about that previously, but going sector by sector is going to take a long time, right? If you have a 500 gig drive, it doesn't care how much data is on it. It's going to back up every sector, no matter how much time that takes. And that's why that's more of a data recovery tool. And like you said, using these, uh, the second option that we're looking at here, which is the um, uh, pre and post commands, that's what you're talking about there, where you can enter these commands in before and after a chronosome. But it's, it's advanced. And again, I want to yeah. keep this just for the everyday user, so you can ignore the ev everyday users can ignore that. Validation. I am hooked on validating my backup archive. I personally think this should be turned on by default, as far as I'm concerned. And yep. I validate regular. Nothing wrong with validating. And you can specify, apparently, a scheduler on how often to verify. Now, I, I, and logically, I sh if I'm verifying it once, I shouldn't need to verify it again. So it doesn't really make sense to check both of those boxes unless you're really, really paranoid. Uh, usually, one box or the other is all you need. But I want to back. I want to validate the backup immediately after it's created, just to verify its integrity. Yep. You're okay with that? You understand my logic? Mm -hmm. Okay. So next, we've got backup reserve copy. What does that mean? Here you create you create a second copy of your data. So 
when the backup is created, what it does is copies the, back, the created backup to a location you specify, to a second location you specify. So if you click on create a reserve copy of my backups, okay, you're now able to specify the location, which will be either a local destination or network share or a, your NAS device, for example. And it would do this every time? It would make two backups? Yes, yes, exactly. Interesting, interesting. So you can so, move it in two places. You could have it, you could, I could load it over to my NAS and locally on the laptop simultaneously. Yeah, if you click on my NAS, for example, my NAS connections, Uh huh. just double click on it. It should automatically locate your, your NAS. Yep. Yeah, then you, you, you edit credentials, you specify the credentials for NAS device, and then you're right. able to browse into uh, specify the folder where you want to have your backup stored. Wow. See, now, what I was thinking is I would just make the backup and I would just physically copy and paste it to the NAS when it's done. Can I do that too? Yeah, you can do that too, but here you automate it. Right. So it'll do it every Monday at 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to do that for right now. Again, I'm gonna keep that simple, but that, just explaining how all of this works. So, removable media settings. Yeah, here, if you create a backup on your external device, like flash drive or external drive, you can specify to put the bootable media oh, on that device. Also, it becomes a rescue disk. Clever. Yes. yes, exactly. Okay, very cool. Let's move down to error handling. Uh, like I like to check ignore bad sectors. I don't want this backup to stop for any reason, so we'll just ignore bad sectors. Do not show messages uh, when processing. No, I want to see the messages. Mm -hmm. um, when, when not, not enough backup. space in secure zone, delete the oldest backup. Perfect. And re attempt. attempt. Number of time, number of attempts. It'll try five times, waiting 30 seconds intervals. Okay, and but then it's it's customizable, so you can specify ten attempts every one minute or five minutes, or whatever time frame you want. So here it says computer shutdown. Stop all current operations when I shut down the computer. Yes, or you can choose to also shut down the computer after the backup is complete. So if you want to set this up to you leave your computer running on Sunday, you go to bed Sunday night, two o'clock in the morning, your backup happens. You wake up, your laptop is off if you check this box. Yep. Yep. All right. And then performance. What do we have under performance? Compression level. I like maximum, but that slows down the process, right? Yeah, that may, that may slow down the process, but it also depends on what operation priority you set. Operation priority is uh, more important because if you set it too high, then the CPU will mostly be used for the uh, backup procedure, and it's best to use high when you're not using a PC, because you'll, you, 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 you may notice a slowdown of all other operations. So what it's doing is it can back up while you're using the computer, and it won't make much of a difference in the responsiveness of the machine if it's set on low priority. It'll still work yeah. in the background. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to set it to normal, and I like Max because Max compresses everything to give you the most amount of drive space, to take up the least amount of drive space on your backup. Yeah, but we need to keep in mind that on videos, the compression uh, is, not, is not that... Yeah, well, pictures and videos are already compressed. And MP3s, that, that's already compressed files. They're not going to get much smaller. But things like Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint presentations, your Windows operating system, you can compress 30 gigs down into 20 or maybe even 15. Yep. And let's see, we'll scroll down. I was scrolling down. Snapshot for backup. What does this mean? Well, you can use either Microsoft VSS or a Cronus snapshot provider. Uh, by default, it is VSS, and only if, in some reason, uh, Microsoft VSS is not able to create a backup file, which really rarely happens. Uh, uh, it is possible to switch to a Cronus snapshot, which is our native uh, technology, which facilitates uh, creating the backups of all the system. So this is, I, I still don't understand what this is. This is the format in which the data is assembled? 
in the background? No, no, no. Uh, so VSS stands for volume shadow copy. So oh, so a file is in use, it won't let you copy. Yes, 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 yes. But a yeah. volume shadow makes a copy or a shadow of the file. Yeah, once you start the backup, it will create a shadow copy of the system. I got you. So, that way so let's say you're in Microsoft Outlook and you're reading email, but you want to back up your PST file, which contains all of your Outlook data. It won't let you do that without a volume shadow copy of it. Yeah. But if you close Outlook, you don't have to worry about that. You got really silent. Am I not making sense? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're totally right. You're totally okay. Right. Oh, that music to my ears. Great. So that's it for our settings, right? We've gone and data, 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 data upload speed, which may be important in case if there is a slow connection or uh, some connection is necessary. Because well, wait a by minute. default, we're not uploading anything. Yes, but if you upload to cloud, if you back up to cloud, the setting comes important. Just, yeah, just okay. wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's only for cloud backup, but not for what we're doing here. So for the most part. For people at home that are just it's like, all right, you guys talked over my head. All you need to know is you're going to go to schedule, you're going to set your schedule, and you can pretty much leave everything else alone. If you want to turn the compression on higher, you can. But otherwise, if if you just do this and then click OK. Yep. And let's see what happens. Uh, back up now. You right? can either back up right away or leave it to run on schedule you defined. Perfect. So well, you I want to back up. up Drop down button. I see. That uh, defines first occurrence, whether you want it to run manually or if you press later, it will run on the specified schedule. I want to see how long this takes to back up this laptop. This laptop mm -hmm. has how much data on it? Let me take a look. 31 gigabytes. It shows you right right there. Oh. On the, on the, <laughs> yeah. If you look at the right there, source. Yeah. yeah. 31 gigs. Let's see. I'm going to hit back up now. It's it's 2.31 my time. I'll hit back up now. And let's see how long this takes in real life. Yeah. Also note that if you did not specify shut down the computer after completion in the options, but for some reason you want, for, for, for a particular occurrence, you want the computer to be shut down, you can check the box, shut down the computer after completion. And uh, once the backup done, you can like it will it'll be shut down. Perfect. And also, and also, we can do that right now. But uh, if you click, uh, if you you see the icon right near the words backing up, uh, this lets you no 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 on the left. Oh, add backup. No 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 right a little bit right right under the shutdown checkbox. Okay. Oh the, yeah, here. that lets you specify comments for your backups. Uh, oh, for, for right, okay. right, right now we can do that because backup is running, but uh, when you create a backup, uh, you can specify the any comments you want. Say uh, one backup is like golden image or another backup is backup of your photos or, or another backup is backup of your something else. So comments will help you uh, if you're not sure what, what, what is inside the backup comments will help you to understand it more easily. But this uh, is this actually handy for people who, who, who backs up a lot and, and do a lot of different backups, like me, for example. That, that's right. really, really cool. All right, so it's backing up right now, and I've taken it off of that screen capture because it's going to be a few minutes here. It's, it's saying it's going to be about a half an hour, but Acronis is notorious, at least the the rescue disk is notorious for saying it's going to take nine minutes and it takes an hour, which I'm used to because my wife always says she needs five minutes and it turns into half an hour. So I'm used to that optimistic time appraisal. But is the time more accurate when you're running it within Windows than running it off the bootable rescue disk? I think timing depends. Well, timing may be recalculated at any given moment considering the speed of the operation. So if for some reason, at some point, the speed of, the, of writing the data on the, on the destination is slow down, then the timing may increase. If then it returns to a normal speed of operation, it may, it may increase or decrease. Well, that depends, again, on the speed of operations. But I, I, I feel your pain here about the uh, timing issues. That's a longstanding. Uh, a longstanding uh, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's been that way forever. Like I. Like, I don't care how long it takes. It sure would be nice to get an idea. 
it does feel like the little green bar that moves across is accurate, but the amount of time that it represents is never, it's, it's very optimistic, right? And I'm like, after 10 years, it still does this. And it's not the worst thing in the world. But because basically, once you set a backup up, the, the worst thing you can do is stare at it. It's like watching grass grow. Go find something else to do. When it's done, it'll sit there patiently waiting for you, you know? But uh, it's just interesting to me that they've never figured out a way over the last 10 years to make that more accurate. It seems just as inaccurate today as it was 10 years ago. With all the advancements and how far Acronis has evolved, that still remains uh, a nut they can't seem to crack. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a general, a general issue uh, with all the uh, software packages who are dependent on, on, on the speed of operations. So again, if, if the speed of operation change, the timer is changing. And uh, we're really dependent here on how fast uh, and how steady is the write speed. If it's steady, uh, then it'll be a particular timer and it will not change. If, if, if the speed drops or increases, then the time will change accordingly. Well, it's tooling right along. It's backed up about four and a half gigs while we've been talking. The time now says 26 minutes. It feels more accurate running it within Windows then it seems running it off the boot disk. Um, but again, it's a, it's a minor little thing, but I wanna make people aware of it so they don't think anything's wrong. So looking here, it looks like the backup completed. It didn't take as long as it said. Backup is valid, because I, I validated it, which adds a little bit more time, because after it writes it, then it reads it back. Mm -hmm. And now we're done, right? I just, I hit the X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure and I can close out a Cronus. And I don't have to touch it, right? From now on, every Sunday night at 2 in the morning, which is technically Monday at 2 in the morning, yep. it'll just run. And if my laptop's off, the next time I turn it on, it'll run if that date has passed. Yeah. If there are any problems, it will let you know. Can you see the shield icon on the taskbar on the system tray? Shield icon with A and sight. Uh, let's That's see. The... Right down here. Oh, right down here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's also a Cronus Active Protection, which is by default turned on. You know, okay. My concern, first of all, is to get people to just back up the darn computer. If you've got the backup and you don't know how to recover it, that's a good problem to have. But if you never had a backup to begin with, it's going to get expensive. Uh, Begoudin, thank you again. I will see you all again very, very soon. And until then, bye for now.